Hi, my name is Benedict. This is a, a very much an off-the-cuff video and it's exactly what you see is what you get. Uh, I actually intended to do a little bit more of what you see what you get than you're going to see. Uh, and I'm glad I checked first, otherwise there would have been a lot of real dead time and I'm going to show you, show you what went wrong. Uh, so, purpose of this video is re-voicer which is a new rack extension that's come out from turn to on. Their name doesn't seem to be on this, so it is over there in a logo. People love their logos, they don't always love to make them clear. So turn to on uh, in the Propeller Heads rack extension store. As you can see, they've got quite a lot of product. Uh, I will say I don't own any of their product. Um, some of it's been intriguing. I spent some time playing around with Mars Peaks, which is a reverb processor of some kind. But I'll be real honest, I passed on it, not because I disliked the sound of it, but I disliked the, uh, the way that it behaves. And the reason I bring that up is because it's probably what's turned me off most of his devices. Uh, and I did try speaking to him about it at the time, but I don't know whether he understood what I was saying, English as a second language or something or other, uh, I, or it may be that he doesn't see the flaw in his game plan. Now, this is, of course, my opinion, not that I should need to write IMO around anything I say, but I, I do think that he's perhaps limiting his, his options in what he builds, because he obviously builds interesting things. But I think the problem there is that when he builds them, he builds them with his mind in mind, rather than who's using this in mind. Now, if he's building these things purely for himself, it wouldn't matter. He could build them however he wanted but if he's looking to build them for a broad audience, I assume it's a he, um, she, don't care. Uh, for a broader audience, when I look at these in terms of usability, not sound, but usability, because I think his sounds are good, uh, but in terms of usability, I find them obtuse. I feel like I have to get into his brain to understand his brain and how he sees his device work before I can use what, well, if I buy it, is my device. He's not the only developer that does this. We all do it to some extent. It's the nature of being human. We tend to think with our own minds, not necessarily realise there are other minds out there. Uh, Revoicer. Revoicer appealed because it's a vocoder, and I'm an absolute sucker for vocoders. I don't use it much, but I'm a sucker for them. So I downloaded it. Of course, for a voice, I was going to need a voice. He's made a video, and this is part of what started me on this, he made a video which I also found disappointing for the same reason. There was no speech. Uh, it's long. Now, I am the master of making incredibly long videos, uh, and this one probably will be too. Not because I mean to, but because they are. Uh, you can call that a failing as well. But his video was long, and it wasn't spoken at and, and I felt like it wasn't doing a particularly good job of helping us understand what his device was going to feel like. So I thought I might have another go for him to promote him because I think he's got an interesting product. I think he could do better with the way that he designs his UX or user experience, but it doesn't necessarily take away what's underneath it, but it makes it hard to get to what's underneath it. I needed some speech, he used uh, some computer speech. One of the problems with using computer speech is that it's not real speech. It's a vocoder or a semi kind of vocode process often in the first place. So Jane, my partner, has actually been writing her next novel on Twitter. So there we go. Jane, you don't even realise I'm doing this. It's happening to you whilst you're working away there in the other room. Uh, but I've stolen the last couple of sections of what she's written for the speech that we'll be listening to. And now it's going to sound an awful lot like this. I am not a good book reader. Hey, babe. I'm all right. Don't worry. There's been an incident at the construction site. I'm on my way home now, but I need to call Pete straight away to let him know what's happened. There we go. That kind of stuff. So, what I was going to do, 
was have my recording, open this up completely blank, empty, and sh and sort of walk through from the beginning. But I'm glad I didn't because I hit a real roadblock, one I didn't expect to hit. And the fact that I hit me, it hit me, who's good at vocoders and has several times made how to use a vocoder video, concerned me greatly. So the first thing that I ran into, and I do understand this, this has got some to do with with the propeller heads and how things get defined. But if I want to add, if I've got my um, my voice and I wanted to add an effect to it, where would I go? I'd go to effects and I'd be going, oh, turn to on, where's the folder? It's not there. Thankfully, I had looked and seen that he actually builds a synthesizer inside his vocoder, which is a cool trick. It's a cool thing to do. So that made me realize it's probably under instruments because it receives MIDI. Turn to one, revoicer, there it is, great. But just be aware of that because you may find that you've installed it and can't find it. There's a reason for it, but it could trap you. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is to get audio into this. So let's, let's play with the... It has a synth built in. A few different waveforms. I'm not going to fuss about that too much because I don't see this as a synthesizer. It is. Am I going to use this to make my next bang and tune? Maybe I could, but it's just not the way I'm going to think about it. I've got my audio because this is all about vocoding. So I'm going to drag my audio from here and I'm going to put it into the modulator in because the modulator is what you put against the carrier to get the robot voice. Done that. Again, make sure this is talking. I shouldn't be hearing synth right now. Let's press play so I've got my voice. I'm not hearing my voice, that's right for a vocoder. Press this, I should be getting Cylons. Still no Cylons. This is a big problem that a lot of people face with vocoders because vocoders are traditionally, like the one built into, into the Reason environment, it's a three-part device. You need to have the voice, you need to have the synth, that's your carrier, so your modulator, your carrier, and then you need the vocoder, the device in the middle that does the robotizing of your inputs. This one has its own carrier built in, so one would, and its vocoder built in, so the two are there, so one would assume that I could just apply my modulator, my voice, press some notes, and I'd be Battlestar Galactica. I'm not. The fact that this has happened is because, again, the developer has made a decision which makes sense to him, but not to me. Now, I appreciate he's given us options, and that's really cool that he's given us options, because that's something props didn't do, but he's made it harder. <laughs> It took me quite some time to find. I'm wiggling this knob, trying to work out what the hell's going wrong. Turn the internal carrier off and on, and, and I wonder why he's got another button when the obvious button, but they both work, so it's not a biggie. And then I go, what's this? I don't even know what this thing is. Oh, hang on. Tooltips, thank God for tooltips. Modulator source, right input. Okay, well, yeah. It's there. Then I start seeing other stuff over here about carrier modulation inputs. So I'm dragging various wires around, plugging them in here, there, and everywhere. Still not getting really what I'm expecting to get. He's assumed that you're going to put one instrument into here and ring modulate against itself. That's great. If all you ever do is ring modulate the drums to themselves, I guess that makes sense. But is it the thing that most people are going to do when they first plug this in? I don't think so. Maybe that's just a me thing, but I don't think so. But if I go stereo input... Okay, cool. I've got it. There is a limiter in here, or a maximizer. 
and various different modes of clipping. So it's an extra bonus, and that is that's good because vocoders can really. So it's not uncommon to need to compress or or, um, or limit them. So the fact that it's built in, I'm not judging it on sound right now, but the fact that it's built in, kind of cool. It's built in up the top, and it's all a little bit jammed in. I appreciate people are funny about having, you know, twelve U high devices, but I'm also fussy about having everything feeling very cramped. Um, swings and roundabouts, I'd rather fewer knobs and buttons and an elegant workflow than a million knobs and buttons and just feeling like, eh. Um, so if it were me and if I'd been involved in the, the beta stages, I probably would have said to him, you know, Mr. On, let's let's look at having another u another unit rack unit sitting underneath the you know add that much more space because then we're going to be able to spread these things out and help them make more sense they make sense to you because you invented this in your brain and you keep approaching it with your brain but when my brain comes to it and when the brain of somebody who doesn't have 30 years of experience comes to it what are they going to think and feel about this i don't want that to happen because i think it's going to make the product harder to sell so, talking, great. We've got a, ooh, a G. Okay, so we can change our, our overall amp level, fair enough. And an ADSR. So that's controlling the synth tone that we're using to carry our voice. We can also turn the amp, the ADSR, off altogether. So as we see, that become, that just makes it become immediate. So if you don't need ADSR functions and vocoding, all, and all, a lot of the time you don't, then you can just turn it off. Uh, we've got different waves. So what do they do? Let's turn them all off. So. So that's a waveform below. Cool, whispery, so Jane doesn't need to know that I stole her uh, story. But what's interesting here is that we can... We can add a few layers. And let's go back and have a look at this pulse. This is doing something to allow us to control pulse width modulation. But based on these descriptions, I don't know what they do. There's pulse width, minimum width. I don't know what it is. No doubt it has a purpose. And it's probably a cool purpose. But I don't know what the hell it is. Um, and I know I'm really picking on you, but I don't want this to be a device that confuses people. Vocoders confuse people enough as it is. Knob. Vocoder gain controls the overall level. Brilliant. Nice and clear. Soft bypass. Seems to just bypass somehow to the internal device. So it's, it's half bypassing the device, but not bypassing it totally. Which makes me realise that we don't have the standard reason three-way switch here but because it's coming as a synth synths don't normally have a three-way switch on them see so I guess it doesn't need one it's a it's it's a unique device fair enough what's happened I don't understand why were you on site at this time that's an unusual kind of a knob in what it does what it does, ultimately, is pretty common on a vocoder. It allows you to blend between the reporter, the, the voice sound. Hey babe, I'm alright, don't worry. 
there's been an incident at the construction site. I'm on my way home now, so I need to call Pete straight away to let him know. Thank you. Your, your classic um, disco vocoder sound commonly used some of the original singer's voice as well as the vocode. Uh, it gives it better cut and clarity in the mix. Uh, so that's allowing you to do that. That's a bit unusual. It's so it's a it's kind of like two knobs in one, and that's all right. Nothing really wrong with that. You just got to take a moment to understand what it's doing. A uh, little less immediate as to why you'd go that side on um, on voice. But if you're vocoding instruments one against another, the fact that it gives you that option, cool, that is good. Uh, internal synth, shift. I kind of wonder why you didn't call it pitch um, or tune because shifts almost suggests we're doing something different, unless that is doing something different. But it doesn't sound like a frequency shifter to me, it sounds more like a pitch. So again, it's just one of those things that made sense to him, oh, this knob shifts the pitch. But if it said pitch and it's a knob, I assume it shifts pitch. You see where I'm coming from there, that it might have been clearer to say what the knob affects, because obviously the knob affects, because it does something, because it turns. Uh, phase, we can change how phase behaves, it can reset, it can be free, or it can be random. So that's kind of a cool thing on such a tiny synth, that um, you've got control of the phase relationship of each oscillator as it starts. That appears to be what that is, unexpected, kind of cool. DC block. I'm on my way home now, but I need to call Pete straight away to let him know what's happened. I don't understand, why are you on the side of this? I kind of know what it is, but I have no idea why I need it. And it's not. Doing anything apparent. So, not going to make a judgment on it, other than the fact that 30 years and I don't know what it's doing there. It's not a thing I regularly see on a synth. Uh, invert. I'm on my way home now. Not relevant in a, in a voice Cylon type situation. Um, but when you're vocoding instruments one against another, you might say, look, I like some of this, but what if I could have the drums vocoding the synth rather than the synth vocoding the drums? There are times when you want to invert those inputs, and that's primarily, I believe, when you're using <coughs> that configuration there. In other words, you've, you've flown something in here or, or whatever. You'd work that out as you go. It's a good option to have, but again, I think just probably defaulting to stereo input. We've got a number of different band options. And the more bands you have, in theory, the, the smoother the sound will be. Um, he goes up to 24, to be honest, I'm not hearing a lot of difference above 16. No doubt there are situations in which that becomes useful, but even on, on the, the stock reason vocoder, I very rarely go much above 16. Um, I, my personal point of view um, is when I'm vocoding a voice, I want it to sound like it's 1978. Oh, I don't want it to sound good. I want it to sound like a Cylon. Um, we've then got this thing here, which is a, it's a filter. It says center frequency and yet you've got a, you can define a lowest frequency and a, and a higher frequency. I'm on my way home. You can see what frequency you're at with these controls here. You can even use those controls there. Kind of good. Okay, they don't do anything. I'm sorry, I'll tell you all about it when I get home. All right, and be careful. You don't to worry, but I have relaxed a little. I will. I promise. What was the name of that guy you were looking for, the wind machine, the reporter? Cool. Really nice sound. I really like that. 
It's, it's, it sounds great. The guts of this device are great. Um, getting to them, a little obtuse. Uh, you seem to have different shapes. A resonant bell or a flat top band shaper. So is this band shaper controlling this filter? Probably not because they're in separate boxes, but then the resonance control is in a separate box from the frequency controls as well, which indicates that that's separate. So my confusion is, even though this is not in a box with this, whether this is related to this or not, I don't know. Band shaper. I don't know what that does. Is this the band shaper here? I'm not hearing a change. Maybe it re maybe it responds to something that's not the synth. I don't get it. Um, mod wheel amount and mod destination. Low frequency, high frequency. Let's set it to high frequency because that's kind of what we expect. Let's pull that down. Let's pull that up. Let's Okay, cool. So it allows me to use my mod wheel to do things. Cool. I like it. Alt pan. I don't recall seeing a pan or alt pan on the front here. Oh, there. I'll tell you all about it when I get home. Mod envelope speed. Alternate pan. I will. I paused. What okay. was the name of that guy you were looking for, the witness, the reporter? So what he's trying to tell us here is that that seems to pan every alternate band. Let's go down to four. Yeah. So somehow, and from what he's suggesting with alternate, it would seem that every second band is panned left or right. Not always kind to your signal, but... Alright, higher band counts really do smooth that out. Again, I wonder why you wouldn't call it wide. Because it tells us what we're going to get. Turn up this knob, get more wide. Um, alt pan. Again, 30 years in, and I'm going, what the hell's an alt pan? You know, is, is, is it a guy with non cloven hooves who doesn't play a flute? I get you probably are going, like, you're a bastard, Benedict, you're pagan on me. Man, I'm actually trying to, to, to help you here and also to give people another video on your device. I think your device sounds great. I really do, and I and I like vocoders. I think this is a nice vocoder. Not an easy one to use, but a nice vocoder. All right, so we got a modulation thing. I'm all right. What's this doing? Why were you on site at this time anyway? It's a long story. I'll tell you all about it when we get home. All right, but be careful. You still sounded worried, but have relaxed a little. I will. I paused. What was the name of that? Okay, this appears to be the speed at which the slices are made. Kind of like in a grain synthesizer, it slices the, 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 the donor sound into little slices and does its magic. This is doing that in a sense. It's slicing your audio into little slices. Uh, I am so easily amused. Uh, and this is defining the granularity and the speed of that. So 
super right. accurate. Don't worry. This people gets a bit readily. Other end. Processing speed is so slow that you just get a blur. Now, each of those extremes has uses, so that's a good thing. There is the equivalent of this in the um, in the Reason device with your two knobs up the front, which are, I think it's attack and decay or something like that. I'm all right. Don't worry. So, why it's here, I don't know. When I'm first looking at it, modulation, it's like, oh, it's got an LFO on board. What can I LFO eyes with it? Nothing, because it's not actually an LFO. My bad, or is it his bad? Because he's confused me. 30 years in, normal, normal sort of naming conventions are not followed. Um, I need to call Pete straight away to let him know what's happened. I don't understand. Why are you on site at this time anyway? It's a long story. Cool. I do like it. Put some effects on it. It still sounded worried, but I have relaxed a little. I will. It's mine space delay with a little bit of... What was the name of that guy you were looking for that went missing? The reporter. And then, I'm alright. Don't worry. There's been an incident at the construction site. I'm on my way home now. I need to call Pete straight away to let him know what's happened. I don't understand. Why were you on site at this time anyway? This is rather cool. It's a really nice sound. Alright, but be careful. You still sound worried. Better have relaxed a little. Oh, I paused. What was the name of that girl? Uh, the other feature that this fella has is the ability to use an external synthesizer. So, just so we can see, we'll turn that off. Nothing happening. We'll turn on Thor. Nothing happening, because I didn't wire it up. When you first insert your Thor, you might want to shift click as you insert it, because you'll insert it, it'll bring a mix channel with it. You don't want the mix channel. So when the mix channel's there, unplug it, Control delete just the mix channel because this is not a standalone synth. So we will drag its input to the carrier inputs. There's another kooky one. Now there may be a good reason for this, but for most usage, I feel like it's a kooky one. I've dragged this across. Normally, behavior in reason is if I drag this one across, it'll wire up both for me. Why did it not wire up both for me? I know I might want to do something different, but why are you assuming that for me? I know either way is an assumption, but is, Mr. Developer, is your assumption perhaps less common than the assumption of other people? Obviously, without taking some kind of universal poll, it's a little hard to know, but perhaps think about the most common usage. Cool. He talks about stereoness. Now, I don't think there's really any in inherent stereoness in this. So that might be part of why we're going a little bit wrong, because Reason's uh, vocoder is not stereo. Um, uh, what am I trying to do? Add an effect. Um, I use it. Let's just go back to... I'm on my way now, but I need to call Pete straight away to let him know what's happened. I don't understand. Why were you on site at this time anyway? Okay, so it's passing us. Sorry, I'll tell you Stereo all image. Get okay, great. All right, but be careful. I 
not hearing the stereo carry through. It says it's stereo, but I'm not hearing the stereoness. There's a whole lot of stuff here about Okay, that's nice. It says it's either mono, single channel mono, or true stereo. There are quite a lot of CV inputs on here whilst I'm distracting myself. Okay, need to try what that is. It's probably self-evident, hopefully. Um, lots of CV inputs, so that looks like it's probably pretty cool. Uh, a lot of flexibility. You can goof with things in real time. It needs a manual that's going to be in nice, clear English. Preferably not one of those ones that says the speed knob changes the speed. I couldn't have worked that out myself. So, without having downloaded or tried a manual, I'm not going to have much opinion, but I'm confused at the moment with lack of stereoness. It's a long story. I'll tell you all about it. Alright, be careful. It's still standing worried, but have the right something. I've still got a mono signal. So, I may be wrong, but I got the impression that um, its stereoness was a uniqueness of this device. Maybe it's just this. See, that's created stereo already. So, unless I'm missing something, and I'm happy to be missing something, I really am, uh, the device is not actually stereo. Um, I'll turn that off. Um, so no matter whether I feed it something stereo from the the modulator or the carrier, it doesn't actually seem to process itself in a stereo unless you use. This faux stereo mode, which is good. I like the faux stereo mode, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't seem to me like it's really processing true stereo like we would expect out of a true stereo reverb. Not that vocoding traditionally is something that we get overly stereoated about, but maybe I just read it wrong, but I got the impression I was being told that stereo is a feature of this, this beastie. And if that's the case, oh, I'm kind of not getting what I hope for. Um, sounds good. Okay, the extra bands do become a little bit smoother as we are putting in more complex external material. Uh, so maybe there's just an inherent coarseness to the onboard synth which, while very suited to, to, to vocoder nation, um, thanks, Bao, uh, it may not really show off itself until we need to... I'm still probably not going to be driving, unless I get into trying vocoding instruments to instruments. Um, not too fussed on those um, higher bands, but they're there, and, and they're not going to do you any harm if you never use them. Yeah, look, without the limiter it uh, gets a bit excitable. So the limiter is clearly doing its job uh, and I don't think in terms of vocal vocoding we ever really question how pleasing sounding those devices are, but it's doing its job and overall 
this vocoder really does sound very nice. I have never been a massive fan of the stock vocoder built into Reason. Don't really know why. Um, I just felt like it never automatically gave me that really cool 70s vocody sound. This kind of does. It's, it's got its own character, but I think it's, a, I think it's sonically a very nice device. Um, so whether you should buy it, I don't know. That's your call. Pull out and try it. If you're looking for something that's going to give you classic vocoder sounds, I think it's a winner. Um, if it's something that you are likely to struggle over, as in you get devices and you go, how do I use this? I'd love to see this developer uh, team themselves up with either a really good beta tester or alpha tester who helps them develop their product in a way that it's going to sit in the market a little nicer, uh, and, and or a user design expert. Preferably a user design expert who actually uses this gear. I've seen some um, synth designs, synth covers, you know, music, VSTs, what have you. So it's past my lunchtime. Uh, developers go outside of the music environment for the people they've used to, to make their face plates. And they look pretty, but... <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> it's... it's less greebly than this, but still doesn't play out. Uh, so if you understand everything that I've gone through here and you're straight up all over it, then look at the price if it's worth it for you. I think it's 25 at the moment on intro, 49 full. Uh, then it's probably a bit of a no-brainer. If you're going to be a little bit like I plug it in and suddenly it doesn't work, oh now I need to kill myself, then let's hope that there's either a really great manual that you actually read, um, or that perhaps a developer can look at hiring or talking to somebody who can help with user interface, and you can come back with a 1.1 release where all of these things just make reasonable sense out of the box. It's a great device. And if I had it in, in my arsenal and was looking to vocode something, and remember I hadn't even tried vocoding instruments against each other, if I was looking to vocode things, I would reach for this rather than the stock unit. Because the stock unit, I would feel like I never really get what I want. This, I feel like I've gotten what I want. Once I got it working, I feel like I got what I want uh, sort of as soon as I got any kind of result and I don't feel like I've ever hit a bad sound or a sound that just doesn't really do much in it at all. So his guts are great. They really are. Okay, hopefully that helps you in, in understanding this device and, and Mr. Developer turned to on. Um, I'm delighted to help you. I, I extended that hand last time on your uh, on your, your Mars Reverb thing because um, I think your products are got a lot to offer on the inside, and you're probably pushing a lot of people away on the outside. And um, I think that's kind of sad. I hate seeing. Um, musicians, whether they're just hobbyists, but particularly those who are trying to do better, I hate seeing them get stalled. Uh, and it's enough to, to fight your own fear without fighting a thing that's unique without being unique, if you know what I mean. Like if we were to create a, a, another two oscillator synthesizer that was quite a lot like Subtractor, but name everything very strangely, it's really Subtractor. So we wouldn't need, we wouldn't be wise to point out how unique it was or make it seem more unique than it was. We'd, we'd be wanting to sell it based on something else, familiarity or something like that, or look how cool my filter model is. Um, unique, I'm all over if we're doing something truly out there, like when we first hit FM synthesis or something like that. If you've got a unique take on that, then great. But even there, I'd say rather than frightening the hell out of people, let's see if we can use terms that are at least similar. Thanks very much for your time.